Hello, everybody. It is Mike Levin on Tuesday, August 9th, 2022. And here I am in Windows 10, my day-to-day -day work environment, which you can probably barely tell except for the Windows logo here and here. Otherwise, I've stripped everything out. But for the icons, I need to leave on the desktop in order to get a keyboard shortcut. I've unpinned everything from the taskbar. I've hidden all my notification icons of what's still even running. I've stripped out most things so that it feels like just a, a plain vanilla, you know, almost a Linux desktop, except uh, it has to be Windows 10 for a variety of reasons, from hardware support to compatibility with the office to valuing my time dealing with the next driver issue. But I do even cover up this taskbar here with full screen apps when it's convenient and appropriate for the app. So for example, when I edit my journals and I make a new journal entry and I share, you know, how to <laughs> record your day-to-day <laughs> -day work honestly and without uh, much editing, right? So it is Windows and I do use heavy use of these virtual desktops. So from here, I just switch over to here and I'll open another app, typically Jupyter. These are arranged in the order that I open them. Jupyter opens uh, not quite full screen. I do leave the taskbar running. Although there have been times when I've gone into uh, complete focus mode with Jupyter and force the software to cover the taskbar at the bottom, but not all the time. So we could do do function F11 to go full screen mode. One thing I don't do is to use that auto hide thing. Like when your mouse hits the bottom, I find very little more distracting than the way that taskbar pushes up from the bottom. It's just awful. Uh, so you could start a new notebook here and, you know, print hello world. And this is a nice focused environment. You can get even more focused by, you know, getting rid of the tab there by going into simple mode. Isn't that nice? But you shouldn't have to force yourself to go full screen and hide your taskbar. Very typically, Microsoft Edge is what I have on the third screen here. And uh, yeah, so I'll leave this showing, but it only has those things showing that I'm running. And uh, I might leave the taskbar showing just to show me what software is running and give an alternative way to jump to it, but not on every screen. And one thing I certainly don't do is edit. So can you imagine edit editing? Can you imagine the video editing just on this sequence if I weren't just showing you everything. You know, two times longer, ten times longer, you know, I push out videos maybe once per day, sometimes more, sometimes less, but I'm working on it. And one way that I work on it is to not introduce more editing. I'll even do some Python automation to eliminate editing. And that'll be a subject of future videos. But can you imagine now if I had to show another icon there of a piece of software that is running that I didn't want to necessarily show, but because of the way it's written, I just have to show it. It's like branding, right? I'm talking about these three pieces of software running, the terminal, the uh, full screen or the Jupyter desktop, right? And then uh, the web browser, right? I'm not talking about a fourth thing running here, which is what I would have if I were still on Camtasia 2022. So I have Camtasia Recorder 2020 installed on my machine two years ago, from two years ago. You can see its icon hidden here. I could bring up the user interface. Won't even know if that shows in the video or not. But when you minimize it, it it's completely gone. The new version 
2022. If I tried running that, I'm not sure how well it's going to run with 2020 running. All right. Well, there it is. And there is its little icon that it shows. Now, if I were to start recording and even minimize that, there's just no way to get rid of this icon. This icon is not a, about Camtasia video recorder. I don't want it showing here. And so I went researching, and it's not hard to find. You just want to hide the Camtasia recorder, right? It's a very popular site, I'm sure, for a lot of people. And this was from two years ago, and they were uh, explained how to do it. So this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm hiding it over here. And since then, it's changed. So I finally got tired of producing videos advertising Camtasia and asked them how to do it. And people are jumping on the bandwagon, Kayak Man, and here's Johnny to show me alternatives and you know make suggestions. And the only thing that really worked for me is to stop using it, right? To stop using Camtasia 2022. Uh, I might look at a refund, I'm not exactly sure. But as I point out the th compromises and the things, the hoops I have to jump through to continue using a piece of software whose feature set has changed during the upgrade path since I bought it, uh, you know, the latest is uh, Kayak Man showing here's how to cover up the taskbar icon. Yeah, I know how to cover them up. I can just go to a full screen terminal, right? I can edit, and I am quite aware that I could go into the Camtasia video editing software and actually edit, but you see how I'm working. Does this look like I'm going to slow down to edit? Editing is really the last thing I'm going to do. So I will continue to use Camtasia. Uh, 2020 and when I hit F10 to stop recording I'm gonna have to find I'm gonna have to load Camtasia 2022 for editing because I can't very well use 2020 for editing because the fonts become so incredibly small that I have to take my glasses off and squint just to read the drop-down menus and stuff so whatever they did to make the fonts readable is only in uh, 2022 so I have to load Camtasia 2022 and then surf my way in to find where I just did the screen recording, grab it and drag it in and do a little bit of editing where I really didn't have to before I could just start the export. And there you have it. You know, I'm one of these people who gives a, um, an honest experience of uh, what it's like working. And uh, that allows me to go at a very fast pace. Right. It's not completely unwarranted. There's a certain audience out there that likes this. If I were to go to uh, my YouTube studio, You'll see, I've got over 11,000 uh, followers, and uh, I do a lot of live casts too. And right, I'm not going to edit during the live cast. I'm constantly, you know, uh, splitting my work between live casts and uh, uh, normal videos, uh, recorded videos, screencasts like this. And uh, I'm not going to have one technique I use for one side, other technique I use for another side. I'm just pushing around the compromises, you know. So. I'm uncompromising on certain things like minimal editing. And I'm compromising on certain things. Like dealing with quirks. Feature rollbacks, right? Come on, TechSmith. Don't do that.
to get, you know, a type of software that isn't yet better in the free and open source world. I may learn Blender to see if it has these, you know, uh, TechSmith, Camtasia, Camtasia, uh, screen recorder, and editing features. Because Camtasia taking away uh, that, that critical feature of screen recording and having to do all these workarounds is just it's not worth it it's stupid you know i'm using proprietary paid for software that keeps me paying every year pretty much you know against my will because it's not in the free and open source community yet nothing quite as uh, slick as camtasia uh, but the moment it is i'm hopping off especially when they do things like this uh, you know, I don't want that show. And look at that. Ugly, ugly, ugly. This is the way screen recording is supposed to look for people like me who don't do a lot of editing. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.